Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And today I'm gonna to talk about how we homeschool year round and also what our summer schedule looks like. Okay, so I've gotten the question several times from many of you about how do we homeschool year round? What does that look like? How do you determine when you do your breaks and that kind of thing? So I wanted to spend just a little bit of time on that today because that question comes up so frequently. And the one thing to just remember is that everybody does it differently. So you just really have to figure out what works for you. Some people like to take a long summer break and some people do not. Um, we kind of have a strange way of doing it that I really don't know anybody else. I've never talked to another friend that says, yeah, we do it like that too. So. Our way of doing it may sound really weird, but um, it, it's always worked for us. We've done it this way for years and it's just what we like to do. Um, it's not always exactly the same, but it usually kind of follows a pattern. Um, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is the fact that you need to check your ho local homeschool laws, so your state's homeschool laws. So we have a couple of things that we have to keep in mind when we plan our homeschool year. So the first thing is in South Carolina where we are, we are required to homeschool under either the public school or an accountability group. And either way, the accountability group or the public school is gonna tell you when your school year has to end. You can't just arbitrarily choose a date or say, we don't really ever end, we just keep going. That's not an option in South Carolina. We have to choose an end date. The accountability group that we use is called SCAES the South Carolina Association of Independent Homeschools, and they give us a date of the end of May that our homeschool year has to end. So we don't have the option of going into June for the current school year. Both of my girls have to finish the grade that they're in, which is 11th grade for Katie and second grade for Sophie by the end of May. Wherever we are then, we have to stop, turn everything in, and this year ends. Now we can pick back up the very next day if we want to, but that starts the next academic school year. So, um, we also in South Carolina are required to have at least 180 days of school. I know that is a very common requirement um, in many states, but that is our other requirement that we have to keep in mind when we schedule our homeschool year. So go ahead and check with your state and make sure that you know what the rules are as you're you know, scheduling your homeschool year, especially if this is um, something that you've just recently started doing. Like I said, we do homeschool year round um, and we like to take a lot of breaks throughout the year rather than taking all of our break during the summer, but we still don't do it um, like every six, we homeschool for six weeks and then take a break or take a break every quarter. We don't do it in that way. We're a little bit more flexible than that. So this is kind of what our summer schedule kind of looks like. So we usually end our current school year um, about the second week of May. Some years it's been the third week of May. And then when we do that, we take the rest of May off because if we've ended our school year, we can't begin our next school year until June. That's just how our rules are. So we can start on June 1st if we want to um, with our next school year. Um, and so what we usually do is we'll take off two weeks in May or two and a half weeks or however many weeks are left in May. We take that as like just vacation with no school. And then we usually roll some vacation over into June. So some years we've taken the entire month of June. That would be rare. Um, we did that the year that we adopted Sophie from China because we did do our China travel um, during the month of June and we really just were not on, we were just unable to resume school, you know, quickly after coming back. That year we did more of almost like a public school schedule where we started back in August and we took most of the summer off. That was rare for us though. Normally that's not what we do. So we usually will take at least four straight weeks of school off once we finish the current school year. Um, sometimes we'll do five, sometimes we'll do um, less, it just kind of depends. So we take off some time in June and then at some point in June um, or in some years in July, we will start back with either two day or three day school weeks. So we're still getting some time off. So we're still kind of having a summer break in the sense that we're only counting school days, either two or three um, days of that week, if that makes sense. Um, this summer, we really need to try to get Katie through economics over the summer. So we're gonna be doing three day school week starting sometime in June. And I'll show you what that's gonna look like in just a minute, I'll pull up Homeschool Planet and show you what our schedule looks like. Um, but that's what our plan is. And normally by about the um, third week of July, we go back to regular five day school weeks. 
Sometimes I don't start all of our subjects back all at once. Sometimes I kind of ease us in. Um, but usually we will start with our regular five day weeks at the end of um, July. And um, since a lot of times I don't start back with all of our subjects, we are still having shorter days. So it's not like we're having a summer break because again, on the first, on the front end of the summer, we're still having like four or five day, like weekends. <laughs> and then as we get into July and we start with like a, a reduced subject schedule, we're still only doing shorter days and we can still get out um, use the pool, whatever we want to do, just, you know, do fun things in the summer. So it works really well for us. Um, and then of course, by August, we are full on into a regular school year. Um, in the past when we've done co-ops and things like that, we usually start that about the time that our public school starts, which usually in South Carolina, it's like the third week of August. Although this year it was very, very different because of COVID and like where we are um, in Hilton Head, they didn't really go back to school until sometime in September. So it was a very odd year, um, but that's not typically the way it goes. So um, that's what we like to do. And then in addition to that, um, we also take several uh, weeks off during the year. We pretty much will always take a week off in September. We like to take Labor Day week off, but we might take a different week off um, this year, you know, living in Hilton Head, that would be kind of a, um, a crowded week. So we might take a different week off than Labor Day, but traditionally that's what we've done. We usually also take a week off in October. When we take a week off in October, it's usually for travel because we like to go to the mountains in October. Then we pretty much always take Thanksgiving week off as well, the entire week. Um, and then we usually will take between two and four weeks off at Christmas, just kind of depending on how the school year is going and what else is going on, um, whether when we're in a co-op or not. You know, when you're in a co-op, that really drives your school year and you don't have as much flexibility. Um, this year, Katie will be, um, this year Katie's going to be doing dual enrollment and we really don't know all of her schedule yet. She has not been able to register for classes yet, so we don't know what days she's gonna need to be on campus or what times on those days that she'll need to be on campus. I doubt she'll need to be there every day, um, but her vacation um, you know, time, uh, it's not completely clear to me yet, so I may have to tweak my schedule on the basis of her dual enrollment because as much as I can, I probably wanna keep us all on a very similar schedule. So, like I said, we'll take a longer um, Christmas break, usually no more than four weeks, but that would probably be the longest. Um, and then we start back to school in January. We usually will take a mental health week off in February because it seems like the burnout always happens in February. Um, I have scheduled it and not used it in the past, um, but a lot of times we'll take like the last week of February off, just the entire week off. Um, again, that might not be something that Katie's able to do this year because I really just don't, I just don't really know her schedule. So we'll have to look at that. Um, and then we also usually will schedule two weeks off for spring break. However, we don't always use the two weeks. It just really depends. Um, every time that we have scheduled two weeks for spring break and only used one, we always just end our school year one week earlier. So we don't just do extra school. We just end our school week or our school year earlier. So that's actually what we did this year. We were scheduled to end the third week of May. We're going to end the second week of May because we did not take our second week of spring break. So that's kind of how we do it. Um, it's, that's probably a little bit of uh, you know, kind of a lot to follow. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on Homeschool Planet what it looks like. Um, Homeschool Planet is just an online, um, like digital planner that homeschoolers can use. Um, not everybody likes to plan that way. A lot of people like to write it down and you know, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna show you this just because it's just a really quick and easy visual to show you what our school year looks like and just kind of give you a better idea of what we're doing. But if Homeschool Planet is something that you're interested in, I do have a link in my description box that gets you a um, 30 day free trial. So I'll put that in the description box for you if you're interested. So this is Homeschool Planet. This is just kind of the landing page where um, it just kind of shows you your assignments and you can check them off. I'm gonna go to school years and um, this is the school year 2021-2022. And um, this is kind of where I um, will go ahead and plan my school year. Right now, this is a rough draft because I can very easily take a day off or add a day. So the X's are days that we're not doing school and the checks are days that we are planning to do school right now. And I can go through the whole year and I've got my first day on June 3rd and my last day on um, 
May 21st, and it's already counting that as 200 days. I'm telling it I want class days to be on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, unless I tell it otherwise. All right, so we have the week of um, May 16th and the 23rd, and then um, the week of Memorial Day off. So in May, and then we come, and then we've got the the first week of June off. So we've got four weeks off. And then starting on the 15th of June, we start three-day weeks. So one, two, three, four, five days of three-day weeks. During this time, Sophie will mostly be doing math and language arts, and Katie will be doing economics. Um, then we start at the end of June, um, July, and this is pretty normal for us to start full-time back either this week or this week. And we start back with five day weeks. And so um, this should allow Katie to get most of the economics class done um, because that's all she's going to be doing um, before she has to start her college classes, which are gonna start somewhere around this like last week of August, um, at least as best as we can tell right now. Again, this is a rough draft. I'm just gonna kind of go through here. Right now I have as a placeholder um, the late week of Labor Day. I have as a placeholder the week of October 10th. Now I picked this week, we usually actually pick the last week of October or the third week of October, but Katie has a couple of days off here for fall break. So I went ahead and chose that week for that reason. Um, then I also took off Thanksgiving week. And then in December, um, for Sophie at least, I believe Katie will be done with her college classes um, during this time as well. But we're going to take the last two weeks of December off and then the first two weeks of January off. And a lot of times we don't take that much time at Christmas. A lot of times we only take two or three weeks off. But this year I was going to take a little bit more because I feel like Katie might need a bigger break having just finished her first like college semester. Um, so that was kind of my plan. However, I don't have her spring schedule, so it's possible that she'll go back the week of the ninth, and we may have to kind of retract that. But again, with Homeschool Planet, it's really easy because I just click this and it turns back into a school day. Um, I don't have any time off in February because again, I don't know her schedule, but we'll probably be taking off some time. And I also don't have our spring break um, scheduled here. Um, and then I have us ending the third week of May. So it is likely that we'll just either do two weeks of spring break and take away a Christmas week um, and probably not take any time off in February this year just because of Katie's college schedule. So we'll just have to kind of play that by ear. But I want to also go back to our um, regular schedule and just kind of show you what this looks like sort of week to week. This is like the last week of May, first week of June, and we don't have anything scheduled. Don't have anything scheduled the first week of June. And then this is when we start back. So I've got both of them on here with um, Sophie and Katie. So I'm gonna just show you Sophie real quick so you can kind of see. So Sophie is going to be working on her Happy Cheetah workbook three, which is actually the second part of first grade. She'll be finishing up first grade reading and she'll be finishing up first grade math. So she'll be starting with assignment um, lesson 136. And then I just put the reading in day by day what she does. And so that's all she's going to be doing. So she's just doing two subjects um, during these short, you know, three day weeks. So she's gonna have plenty of time off. I mean, we'll probably do an hour or two of school in the morning and then she's got the rest of the day off. So it'll be super easy for her. And then for Katie, all she's going to be doing is, let me get back to that first day. All she's going to be doing is um, her economics. So that's, that's all she's got every day. She's got multiple lessons because we're trying to get through that. I kind of went over that with her and just asked her what she thought was reasonable. And um, this is what we came up with. So that's what she's going to be doing. And then we'll get back to five days of week, five days a week school at the end of July. So there's so many different ways that you can do this. Just choose something that works well for you. Like I said, we don't do the same thing every year. It is constantly changing and evolving just depending on what we have going on in our lives. But this is kind of our fallback on plan, you know, typically what we try to do and it works pretty well for us. All right, so that's how we homeschool year round. If you have any questions about this or anything else related to homeschooling, definitely leave those in the comments below. I would be happy to answer those if I can. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.